All right, so our next page, uh, number six through 11, it's asking you to estimate and then solve. So I'm gonna, again, for the sake of time, I'm gonna do a addition problem and a subtraction problem, and you're gonna do the rest on your own. Um, but, um, so you wanna pay attention to this because they, they mix up your signs. So like this first one is a plus, this one is a subtraction problem, this one's a, a subtraction problem, addition problem, subtraction problem, addition problem. So again, you want to pay close attention to your sign to make sure that you're doing the right um, problem. All right, so 7,431 plus 589. Well, I'm going to do my estimation first. So this one, I'm going to round that to the nearest 100, and I'm going to make it 7,400. And I'm going to add that to 600, because that's a friendly number. I'm going to round that to the nearest 100. And that would give me a total of 8,000. Okay, and you can count, you can add 600 to that. So 7,400 plus 600 would be 8,000. All right, so you are presented problems. Sorry, I should put that down. So, um, you're presented problems horizontally. You should be stacking these problems to add these up because that's how we just add numbers. So I'm going to stack these down here. So I'm going to go 7,000. 431 plus, and I'm going to make sure I'm lining up my numbers correctly. 589, that's only a three digit number. So I'm going to make sure that five that's in the hundreds place also gets lined up under the four here in the hundreds place. So I'm going to go 589. So a lot of times mistakes happen when you don't line up your numbers correctly. So make sure you're doing that. All right, so one plus nine, well, that's 10. So you're going to put your zero here, carry that one. So I'm going to go 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Put your 2 here, carry that one. 5 plus uh, 4 I know is 9, plus another one is 10. So there's your 0. I've got to carry that one again. 7 plus 1 is 8. That, my friends, I used U.S. Traditional Edition, uh, and that's the strategy that I use as well, uh, that, that I prefer. So 8... Thousand and twenty is the answer there. All right, I'm going to go to this one here. It's a subtraction problem, and again, I'm just going to uh, do my estimation first. So nine hundred sixty-four. I'm going to estimate, and I'm going to round that to one thousand. Take away one hundred ninety-nine is super close to two hundred. So again, uh, one thousand take away two hundred would be eight hundred. All right, so now I'm going to stack these. I'm going to put these vertically. And again, 964, and I'm going to pay close attention to my um, place value. So that's 100, so it goes in the hundreds place, so 199. All right, so I'm going to start with my ones place. Four, take away nine. You cannot do that, okay? You're going to need a trade. All right, so I'm going to have to go to my tens place. Take one ten away, make that five. Now I have 110, and I'm going to make it, uh, add it to my four ones that are already there. So I have 10 tens added to the four ones that I have for a total of 14 ones. 14, take away 9 now, it's 5 ones. 5 tens, take away 9 tens. Again, you can't do that. So I'm going to trade with the hundreds. So eight. Um, I'm left with eight hundreds, okay? And that trades to 10 tens, add it to the five tens I already have, that makes 15. 15 tens take away nine tens is six tens, and eight one hundreds take away 100 is 700. So it's 765, okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and give you the answers, but I do want you to work these out. I'm giving you the answers because I want you to check your work. So here, this one will end up being 478. Check to make sure you have that answer there. And if you don't, uh, try to figure out where you made a mistake. This one here is 1,221. This one down here is gonna be 66. This one down here is 2,697. And again, I'm not giving you the answers just to give you the answers. I'm giving you the answers to check your work, okay? So why don't you, um, Go ahead, pause the video, and um, see if you can do these problems, right? 
All right, let's work on number 12. Okay, so here it's asking you to convert from feet to inches. So you have a column here that says feet, you have the column here that says inches. So we know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Now to go from one foot to 12 inches, you're basically multiplying by 12. So one foot times 12 inches equals 12. So that's the pattern. Um, um, you would do the same down here. So 2 times 12 equals 24. And you could just double 12 to get 24. And then again, 3 times 12 equals 36. Now another way to do it is just to keep adding 12, right? So 12 plus 12 is 24. If you want 24 plus 12, you would get 36. So now the pattern here, again, is so it's six, 5 times 12, that equals 60. Because if you count by 5, 12 times, you get 60. So over here, it's asking you, explain how you figured out how many inches were in 5 feet. Well, I know that 1 foot equals 12 inches. So 5 feet equals 60 inches because 5 times 12 equals 60. All right, let's look at number 13. So it's asking you to find the perimeter of the rectangle below. So we have to find the perimeter, again, is like if you're building a fence uh, around, let's say, a farm or whatever, and you want to keep your animals in, you have to figure out the perimeter of your, area, of your space. So we're trying to figure out the perimeter of this rectangle. So what we do know about rectangles is that the opposite side is equal in length. So this side is 25 feet, so this side has to be 25 feet. And then this side here is 11 feet, so then we know that this side has to be 11 feet. Because with rectangles, again, opposite sides are the same length. So to find the perimeter, again, if I'm trying to you know, build a fence around my farm, then I would have to add all the sides up. So I'm going to go 25 plus 25. That gets me these two sides. And then I'm going to go 11 plus 11. All right, 25 plus 25, that's easy for me because I think of quarters, and two quarters would be 50 cents. And then 11, 11, so one and one is two, and it's 22. So now we have to go 50 plus 22 because that would give us the whole thing because this is 50, this is 22, so that would be 72 feet. Explain how you found the perimeter. Well, I added all four sides. And then again, uh, 25 plus 25 plus 11. So 11 equals 72. I'm asking you for this one uh, to circle the right angles. So I'm looking at this shape here and I'm wondering, hmm, right angles again are those 90 degrees or that perfect L I call it or that perfect square right so the way a good way to check that is sometimes I use a piece of paper and I just see if that matches up so if I can see I'll show you here so that corner here matches up with that paper so that's a 90 degree angle all right so again I'm gonna see here Hmm. That doesn't quite look like um, a perfect corner here because if I'm looking, I see that this line, if I see through my paper, it kind of goes like that. So again, it doesn't quite match up to that corner. And same over here. Okay, if I put my corner of my paper here, you see how that angle kind of continues this way? It's not that perfect L. So these are not 90 degrees. Let's take a look at this last corner here. So I mean, if I put my corner, yep, this paper corner does at, you know, line up exactly to this angle. So we have two right angles here, that one and that one. All right, for the rest of the page, you're gonna need a straight edge or a ruler uh, to draw these things. All right, so it's asking you, first of all, to draw a ray and label it A, B. Well, a ray, again, I know is like a ray of light from either a flashlight or like the sun. So I'm going to draw using my straight edge. And so the flashlight has an end point 
and the light goes on forever and ever and ever. So when it goes on forever and ever and ever, I signify that with an arrow. So it's, it's asking us to label it A, B. Well, that first letter has to be our endpoint. So the letter A has to be that endpoint because it's that first letter. And then B can go anywhere on the rest of the array. Okay? Just like this one. So draw a line segment and label it C, D. So again, I'm going to use my straight edge and I'm going to start with that. And a line segment, what I know about a line segment is that it has two endpoints. So I'm going to draw an endpoint here and an endpoint there and label it C, D. Well, I'm just going to label one endpoint C and one endpoint D. And with a line segment, you can flip-flop the letters. So you could have put D here or C here. That doesn't matter with a line segment. With array, it matters, though. You can't flip-flop your letters because, again, the array, that first letter, is your um, endpoint. All right, draw a set of parallel lines. Well, I'm going to show you a little trick with that. See, my ruler, naturally, is parallel. So I'm going to do one line like this, and I'm going to go like this on the other side of my ruler. Check this out. Boom, you got parallel lines. These lines will never intersect. That's the definition for parallel. And now it's asking for lines, right? So let me circle lines. What we know about lines is that they go on forever and ever and ever. So you gotta draw arrows to signify that these go on forever and ever and ever. If you don't put arrows, my friends, I've gotta mark it wrong. Okay, because if they had endpoints, it would be a line segment. But these are just lines. Lines go on forever. Segments have endpoints. Draw a set of perpendicular lines. Okay, so those are lines that meet at your 90 degree angle. Because that's the definition of perpendicular. So I'm going to draw one line. That goes like this. And again, because it's a line, it needs to have an arrow. It goes on forever and ever and ever. And perpendicular means it goes at 90 degrees. So I'm going to just do a vertical line. Going like this. Okay. And again, because it's a line, I'm going to draw arrows. But I'm going to show that they're perpendicular by drawing a square here in the corner, because that shows that it's a 90 degree angle. So when you do this on your test, you got to make sure that you have that little square here. And that shows me that you know it's 90 degrees. Again, down here, draw a right angle and label it EFG. Okay, so again, that right angle is also, this again, it's 90 degrees. So it's got to be that perfect L. So I'm going to draw one line going like this. Again, it goes on forever and ever. It's got that arrow. I'm going to draw another line. It goes like this. I'm trying to make that perfect L. So again, and then again, you show that it's 90 degrees by drawing a little square in the corner. And you can't forget this one is also a line, right? It's actually an array, right? If you start here at the vertex, go up in there. So it's like an array there and an array there. So it's asking you to label it EFG. Well, we know that the middle letter of the angle is F. That has to be your vertex. So we've got to put F here. And since it's EFG, I'm going to put the point E up here, EF, and then I'm going to put G somewhere on this way over here. There you go. Draw an acute angle and label the vertex X. So acute, that's less than 90 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to draw a ray that looks like that. And again, I'm going to put my arrow, put my vertex, and draw another ray that looks like this. Now, I know it's less than 90 degrees. If I show, use my ruler to show 90 degrees, it's that perfect corner, right? 90 degrees would be here. And that's less than 90 degrees. And it's asking you to label the vertex H. So the vertex is that center point, and that's H.